Hello, let's do some basic exercise on cues. Okay, let's uh, practice a bit. Uh, so we'll start at the Q lab. We can reuse uh, any of the previous labs uh, where we've got uh, two tasks. So in this case, we'll need uh, two tasks, but uh, the naming will be a bit different than before. We will need uh, task sender one and uh, the task receiver. Both tasks should have the same priority. Let's say OS priority normal. Uh, we will have a bit bigger stack size 256 and uh, the entry functions uh, would be the following. For the sender one we will use start sender one function and for the receiver we will use start receiver function. The rest of the parameters will keep as default. So this you can see it on the screen. In the same tab task and queues there is a space to specify the queues which we would like to have within our free RTOS based application. So bit below within the queues area we will just press add. Then within the new queue we will specify the queue name to Q1, queue size to 8 and item size to unsigned int 8. So uint8 underscore t allocation by default dynamic once done it press ok and we can regenerate the code by pressing ctrl s within stm32 cube ide or by pressing generate code within stm32 cubemix once the code is generated please uh, open the main.c file and let's have a look uh, what has been generated by our code generator. So within the private variables uh, we can see three components, so two tasks, two handlers uh, for the task, so sender1 handle, receiver handle and we can see as well the handle for the q1, so q1 handle. Then within our code after the initialization of the hardware uh, we can see the space uh, with the creation of the queues. So we can see the specification of uh, Q1 attributes where we specify only the name which we gave within our configurator Q1 and then within function OS message Q new we are specifying as a first argument the Q size, so eight components. Then we are specifying the Q item size so in our case this is 80 bit without sign and as a third argument there is a pointer let's say at the address to the attributes table we just defined. Please remember that this uh, q1 underscore attributes contains much more information than only the name. It would contain as well the attributes for the queue and it would contain information about the memory blocks which are assigned to this queue. So it's queue control block its a pointer beginning of the memory where this uh, control block begins and its size and the same story for the message storage area so beginning of this area the pointer to this area and uh, its size okay after analysis of the code which has been generated by our tool for generating the code uh, let's uh, do some code processing so we will start from sender1 task function so the function which should send something to the queue so we will start uh, with some variable declaration within the initialization part of the sender1 function. So just after user code begin5, we will declare 8-bit uh, value without sign x equal to 0. And then within the endless loop, we will start from task action. In this case, we will try to send s as sender. And then just after it, we will try to send some data into the queue. So we will use OS message Q put. Then uh, the first argument uh, we will use Q1 handle, so handler to the Q. Then the item to be sent, so the address of our X variable. Then the priority which is not used. And at the end the timeout given in milliseconds. Of course it would be much better if I would use here either the infinite value, so OS wait forever for example or if I would check at the end the status of this operation and in case if it's not always OK, do some other operations which would be a backup solution to, for example, send the data later on. Because one, this operation will be not possible to be completed. One of the most common examples is that the queue is already full. 
In this case, OS message queue put cannot be successful because there is no free space to be allocated for the new data which is sent by other task. In this case, we need to wait till any other task will recollect some data from the queue. In this case, it will give the space for the new data. So this is the very simplified, very optimistic version of the code. The best would be to use either infinite time as a timeout or to check the status and uh, work differently if uh, there would be something different than OS OK. Assuming that this operation will be successful, I am increasing the X variable. In our case, this variable would be from 0 to 9. And then at the end, uh, we are going into the blocked state for one second by calling OS delay function. So this is the code for our sender. Let's have a look on the receiver task. So receiver task is using start receiver function. And uh, here again, we need to specify one local variable for this task. So with an user code begin start receiver section, we will specify the unsigned 8-bit uh, value called res and uh, initial value uh, to zero. And then within the infinite loop, we'll start from the task action we will send in this case R from receiver and then we will try to get the data from the queue. So we are using the function OS message queue get. Then the first argument is a queue handle. Then there is the address of the variable which we would like to use as a storage area from the data from the queue. Then there is not used priority and the timeout. In this case, I used two seconds, so 2000 milliseconds. But uh, again, better would be to use either the infinite time over here, so OS wait forever, or to check the status of this operation. And in case it is not OS OK, perform a different action to repeat, for example, getting data from the queue. Usually, we receive something which is not uh, correct execution of the, let's say, we are, we, we are not able to get the data from the queue when the queue is empty. When the queue is empty, it is not possible to get anything from this and we are waiting for the new data which would be pulled uh, by other tasks. Okay, so this is the ultra optimistic uh, version. After this function, assuming that uh, we collected something from the queue, we are calling the task action function and uh, we are transferring the data collected. It should be digit from 0 to 9 and I'm adding 48 just to have the ASCII codes of 0 to 9 digits. So we should uh, have at the end 0 to 9 on the output of ITM. Then we can compile the project and start a debug session and let's see what should be the final result. Let's see what is the final result on our output. Uh, in my case, it is SWV ITM data console. So I'm using the ITM to do this. It can be as well the USART, a simple communication. So what I can see is that uh, the first one is a receiver who was trying to read something. It was not possible. And again, it would be much better to use some infinite timeout over here or to check this OS status. Then sender is going to the operation and it is sending zero to the queue. It is in the next row received by the receiver. So I can see the zero and receiver. So this is the second iteration of the task for reception. Then there is a sender. Sender is sending one to the queue. And in the next row, I can see that one is displayed by the receiver and uh, R means that I'm waiting for the next data and then sender, then in next row I can see 2 displayed by the receiver and R, and again sender, 3 and receiver, and waiting for the number, next number, and so on and so forth, till the 9, and then I'm starting from 0. Here we can see the example how we can make the more robust implementation of, for example, receiver task function. And here we can see that uh, uh, within the variables uh, for the receiver task, uh, I added uh, the new one. It is OS status underscore T type. This is R underscore state. And uh, then I'm checking the return value of OS message QGET. This is R underscore state. Based on this information of this status, I can perform different operation than going uh, to the task action. If uh, I do not receive anything, I will not perform the task action in this case. And I have replaced the timeout into the OS wait forever. OS wait forever means that this function will wait continuously till the effect will be done. The 
problem is that if we are not sure that the data will come, it will block us in this line forever. So it is better to monitor the state and in case uh, the state is not always OK, perform different actions and unfreeze the task. Or in case we would like to freeze the task really and waiting for the queue, we can use OS wait forever. But we should be uh, aware that OS wait forever, it is uh, waiting and blocking our task on this particular line. And what is good is that uh, what we can do next, uh, we can use this R underscore state and add it uh, to the live view. But for this, it should be not a local within the task, but the global one and monitor it within the debug session. So it will be clearly visible uh, when the queue will be empty and uh, we cannot get any, any data out of this. Thank you for watching this video.